Well, hello there. This is Dave Taylor. I'm getting ready to uh, prune my Honeycrisp apple tree. Uh, it's a uh, cold and wet uh, uh, day on March 9th, 2013. Um, yeah, and there's about a foot of snow on the ground, unlike last year when <laughs> the buds were starting to break almost by now. Uh, quite a difference uh, year to year here. But anyways, uh, this tree here is approximately five years old, I want to say. I don't really know because I got it at the nursery after it was already a couple years old and it was uh, well feathered already. So, uh, But I want to say it's about five years old. And uh, just going to go over, uh, I'm not actually going to do any pruning on this video, but I am going to explain what I'm going to prune and then, uh, uh, you know, it's just too hard. Uh, I need a third hand like, uh, like Kent says, but uh, um, what I'm going to do is just show you where I plan to prune and then I'll show you the result after it's finished uh, rather than step through it, uh, you know, and possibly make a mistake. Uh, I, I hate making mistakes, so. I, although, I don't know, I, I don't know if it is possible to prune too much, but probably is. I'm, I'm probably the guy who does that. But anyways, um, I, I actually have notes here. Uh, so I'm going to follow like a step-by-step -step process that I developed based on a lot of research I've done. Step number one is to use bevel cuts to remove any scaffolds uh, or branches off of the main trunk that are more than half the diameter of the main trunk. Well, I've looked up and down this tree and it seems I've already taken care of that uh, in past years and through summer pruning last summer. And so you won't find any branches on here that are more than half the diameter. I mean, some of these come somewhat close, like this one here. Yeah, you know, maybe it's half of the diameter of the trunk, but um, you really won't find any that exceed that. So I'm going to leave that alone. So that step's done. That's an easy one. Um, the next step is to remove any branches with a poor crotch angle. Uh, you know, anything off of the horizontal by more than 45 degrees is no good uh, from the main trunk. But again, you won't find any. Because I already took care of that. Uh, this is something you want to do while your tree is growing in the spring and the early summer is you'll want to uh, use clothespins. Um, and I've shown this on previous videos. You'll see some clothespins over here. Right now I'm using them to mark where the uh, scions are going to be grafted on for some new varieties. But uh, if you use a clothespin, you know, when this, when this branch here was young, I would have gone like this and held the branch down uh, so that it maintains a less than a 45 degree angle from horizontal. So that's, oh shoot, where did I put that? That was this one, right? I think, yeah, yeah, it was. So, yeah. So again, step number two is already finished. So that's easy. Um, third step is to label branches selected for grafting and don't touch those because I don't know what size pencils I'm going to get. I want to put a couple new varieties on this tree. Uh, my grafts were um, not successful last winter slash spring, so I'm going to do them again. Um, these two up here that I have marked, those are going to be Kingston Black. And because my other ones all died. Darn it, and I think I bumped one of them and killed it. It might have been okay otherwise. And this one here is going to be uh, Espis Spitzenberg. I, I tried on that same branch last year. And for whatever reason, uh, every, every graft I've tried on the uh, Honeycrisp tree 
has not taken, I think it might be because I grafted too early and the Honeycrisp is more of a, uh, uh, it starts sucking sap a little bit later in the season than my uh, Cortland tree does. So my Cortland grafts took, but the Honeycrisp, no. So anyways, those are done. Um, next I want to remove any unwanted branches and there are a few of these. Anything where it's a little bit too crowded. Again, uh, right on this same branch here, if you step back here, you can kind of tell. Relative to the rest of the tree, it's just kind of busy over there. So, actually what I wanted to do was, I'll take this branch out here, and I'll take this little one out here, so that it's not competing with my new scion. This I might maintain as a nurse branch for a short time, um, but that'll help clear out this area where there's, you just see a, a large number of branches on this side of the tree, whereas this side is much more open. So I want to kind of balance out the tree that way. I'm also going to take out these little weak growths, like you've got one here, and there's one right there. Um, we don't need little things like that. Um, now this one one right here. I'm going to leave that because look at that angle on that. That's just beautiful. So it might come in useful someday if it grows out at all. But uh, some of those little growths, I'm going to take those out. Um, what else? The next step would be to head the central leader. Um, no more than one third of the previous season's growth. This is another... Oh, my footing is terrible on here because I'm I keep sinking into the one foot of snow we got. Um, last season, you can watch this on a previous video. I wanted to limit the growth in the upper portion of the tree because it was the tree was getting too tall and it wasn't the scaffolds weren't developing good enough out here. Um, so I purposely girdled the the uh, I don't know if you can see this. I purposely cut into the bark almost all the way around the tree right at this point and based on that the growth you see uh, gosh if I can get a good spot here against maybe against the sky that's the best thing yeah you see um, these branches here they would have been much much farther out um, I remember from well, if you can bear with me for a second, uh, my battery had run out on my camera, so I had to go charge it up some. But, uh, yeah, I think I was saying, yeah, the, the growth at the top of the tree, I, I think we got a good 18 inches or 2 feet of growth on the new branches uh, in 2011. And so, when I girdled the, uh, the bark of the uh, central leader, in uh, spring of 2012 now the the growth on these little branches up here it's less than a foot it's only like mm, nine inches or somewhere in that eight or nine inches somewhere in that neighborhood so it really did work uh, I'm happy with how, how that turned out because the resulting structure of this tree <laughs> I don't, gosh I'm I'm having a hard time walking through the snow. Um, this is a perfect pyramid form here. So anyways, uh, going back, well, first I'll show you something else too. You can see that this tree has reached maturity because look at all these little spurs on here. There's just a million of them. And all, the, all these old branches have them. That's what you want to see. That's fruit. Far as far as I can tell, I mean, I'm still an amateur, but uh, I like to see that. So it looks like I'm doing something right. So I mean, it's been what three years in the ground now, and no fruit on this tree yet. But uh, it looks like this tree is going to see a big boom of fruit uh, this season. Um, it's it had a chance to uh, veg out as much as it wanted to now it's going to be ready to fruit 
Uh, as far as unwanted branches, I found another one. Look at this. There's a stupid little branch growing towards the trunk of the tree. We don't want that. So stuff like that is going to get pruned right off. Um, what else? There, there's this little one. I don't know if that's... I'm kind of curious. I don't know if, if something like this is actually a fruit bud or if that's actually a branch that wants to go that way. I'm going to leave it either way. It would be kind of a neat, neat experiment to figure out, uh, you know, for, own, for my own personal knowledge, what th something like that does. Same thing with those two down there. They're in a spot that, sh that would be like a fruit bud, but they're kind of long, so, eh, we'll see what happens with that. I don't know. Um, next step on the list, oh yeah, I was going to head this, I'm going to head the central leader just a little bit, because... I was actually debating whether I wanted to do it at all, but being as how I think this is a semi-dwarf tree and not a full dwarf, uh, I think it's got a ways to go yet, so I could get a whole nother whirl of branches up there, and I want to make sure that, uh, that those form and, and we don't just get a tree that's 11 feet tall with no branches at the top, so uh, if I tip it, then uh, that'll promote uh, so, some more branching up at the top. Um, so maybe I'll get another whirl, or perhaps two, of branches uh, in future years. We shall see. Um, the next step is to remove any complex branches uh, if, if things are getting too busy. Now, yeah, I, I showed this branch a few times before. This is the busiest branch on the whole tree, and it's because I, uh, I actually had grafted something on at this point right here last year, and it did not survive. Um, and so that caused a whole bunch of branches to come out here. One of them was pruned off already. Now I'm going to take these other two off as well, um, because I'm still going to use the same branch um, to put something on here. And then ultimately this branch will come off as well, so that the if the graft survives, the new graft will survive. Will have its own branch here, and none of these uh, other ones taking away from it. It started to rain out here now. Yuck! So, oh well. Um, what else can I share? Um, if I had any water sprouts, I would be removing those. Um, I'm kind of thinking that since I do have so many fruit buds on here, um, what I might do, since since they say you don't really want this much fruit anyways, plus you don't want any fruit on the underside of branches because it won't color up as nicely, um, what I might do, I, th I think I will do this, is most of these uh, fruit buds are on the tops or the sides of the branches, but the ones that are facing down, there are a couple of those. Um, th oh, there's, there's one here. Um, it's f facing straight down. I'm going to take the ones that are facing straight down off. We don't need that many. Um, here's another one. This one is facing down to the ground right here. So I'm going to pop those off. In fact, watch this. Oh. Oh, oh, hey, it won't even come off. Wow, those are tough. Whew, they might be froze on. Uh, I don't know. So, anyways, I'm going to prune those off. Uh, just the ones that are facing down. I'll leave the rest to do as they will. Um, the other thing I was thinking of doing, since I do have some weak growth up in the top of the tree, um, along with a couple of vigorous branches going out this way. Well, I won't touch that one yet, but there is one that's going that's quite vigorous. It's almost you see the uh, branch is almost half the, or maybe it is half the size of the main trunk. Um, I think I'll tip that back a little bit just to uh, reduce the amount of wood and to let it spread out a little bit. Uh, that's probably a good candidate for uh, 
you know, splitting the wood some more just to uh, get some additional fruiting wood up there for, for future years. So I'll uh, probably end up doing that. Um, other than that, really the only thing left is where I see weak wood like this, and whoa, I almost fell on my butt. Um, where you see really weak wood like this, and you want it to grow, you'll see I already, maybe you can see this, I already put a notch in here. If you cut just a shallow notch into the bark above any weak wood like this, it may, chances are about 50-50, it may want to grow out uh, much more vigorously. And that's worked for me in the past, like on a branch like this. That was, that was just a tiny little bud that I notched uh, probably a couple of years now. And that is one of my most vigorous branches now. So, so we'll meet up back with you after this is pruned. I think that's about it. So here's how she looks right now. There it is. Get it from another angle, I guess. My battery's about to die again, so I gotta go plug her in. Uh, I'm trying to show there's a lot more wood on this side of the tree than the other, than the whole other side. So that's one of the reasons I want to thin all this out, just to help balance the tree a little better. So. Okay, I'm going to go pruner. See ya.